about holy um, this month in this sermon series, and we remember that God has said, Old Testament and new a lot, be ye holy for I am holy. So we have taken time to look and see what it is to be holy, and to see how God has provided His holiness for us imparted to us through the precious promises of God and the work and the power of God's Holy Spirit, making those promises the reality of our lives. And as I was praying uh, last Sunday, I thought, God, what am I going to preach next Sunday? Uh, the staff and all will be wanting to know tomorrow morning what you would have me to share next Sunday so they can get the sermon notes in the bulletin and get the bulletin ready and things like that. And I said, I don't have a clue, God, what you want for today, September 23rd. And I went to bed Sunday evening not knowing what I would be preaching today. But God woke me up fairly early, a little bit earlier than He normally does on Monday morning and made it very clear what I was to share today and I have it before me, and I'm fixing to share it with you, and it's entitled Counterfeit. There is a substitute for the genuine, the real, that which is truly valuable, and we want to make sure in our Christian life, we're not offering something up to God or to others that is counterfeit. That is not what God would have it to be, and, and that will make a little more sense as we journey together through God's Word this morning. Now, I would like to share a few thoughts with you from Galatians chapter 5, verse number 22 through 26, and then we'll continue with counterfeit. Paul writing to the church at Galatia says the powerful words. He's drawing a comparison of the work of the flesh, the sin nature in us, and the work of the Spirit. He has already uh, written a list of sins in our hearts and lives that are produced in our lives as a work of the sin nature in us. And in verse number 22, he begins to talk about the fruit of the Spirit of God in our lives, and he writes this, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to His cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be, to God. Thanks be to God. When I was serving Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church just outside of Florence, uh, Alabama several years ago, I had an occasion to stop by the convenience store in Florence. I don't know if I wanted a cup of coffee or needed gas, whatever the case was, I had to go inside to pay for whatever it was I, I stopped there uh, to purchase. I remember walking into the store and the counters right there in front of the double doors of this particular convenience uh, shop and I noticed there was either a picture or the real thing there on the counter. It was a counterfeit five dollar bill. I can't remember if it was there and they were waiting for someone to come pick it up or it was a picture of it but there was a note under it that said beware of counterfeit $5 bills. They were being circulated in Florence. And I thought to myself, wow, why would you go to all the trouble to counterfeit something as small as a $5 bill? These days, you can't, can't buy much with a $5 bill. And if you were caught, the consequences for counterfeiting money would be far greater in my heart and mind than the benefit of trying to do that. Well, I said out loud, why? Why would you counterfeit something so small as a $5 bill? And the cashier said something that made a lot of sense. She said, because people don't pay attention to $5 bills, 
they're not worth that much. They pay attention to 20s, 50s, and 100s, and a lot of places won't take a 50 or a 100 now, and to pass a 20 off, they get that brown marker and they swipe across it to make sure it's real, even if it's something as small as a 20. And I thought, wow, I, 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 think, I, I think I understand. And, and even though it made sense to me, I still didn't think it was a good idea to try to pass something off as real something that was not. And we want to talk about that for just a few minutes this morning in the spiritual context of things. Now, you and I well know a counterfeit's an imitation of something important or valuable. We, as a church, as brothers and sisters in Christ, need to be watchful for spiritual counterfeit things in our lives. We must know that what Paul calls the flesh, and some versions of the Bible call sin nature, we have a, a nature, an earthly nature inside of us, because of the fall in the Garden of Eden, that wants to be God. And, and that flesh, that sin nature of us, that is working apart from divine influence, or from God's presence, is prone to sin, and it's even opposed to God. But, regardless of whether or not you're a born-again Christian, your sin nature wants to control your life. How do you know that? When God asks you to do something, influences you to do something inside, impresses it upon you, and you think in your mind, I don't think I want to do that. Amen. Amen. That is your sin nature trying to express control in your life. You know that's God speaking in your debate with God. I'm not sure I want to do that or not. Or maybe you're willing to do it, but you think, God, I think there's a better way to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God's way is always the way, okay? There's no better way than God's way, even though people have tried to make other ways. So, we must... Hear me, church... We must watch ourselves and make sure we're not living out of our human nature or our own ability. We must make sure that we're doing two things that Paul mentions here in Galatians 5. We need to make sure we are living by the Spirit and being led by the Spirit, as Paul says, in every part of our life. Did he leave anything out? We must live in the Spirit and be led by the Spirit in every part of our lives. Did he leave anything out? He did not. We live by the Spirit and we follow the leading of the Spirit. Which means those are two different things. When you are born again, you are placed in Christ by the action and function of the Holy Spirit of God, you have that spiritual connection with God again. He that is joined to the Lord in Christ is one spirit with God. Our spirit is joined together. You are born again. The Spirit of God is there. You're a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God. You are living in the Spirit. But are you allowing the Spirit to guide you and lead you in every part of your life. Every part. Because I will tell you this morning from experience and from the teaching of God's Word that we may be following God in one area of our life and not in another. But Paul said, and Holy Spirit speaks to us even here this morning, that the Spirit desires to lead in every part of our lives. Let me just remind you of what Jesus said in John 15, verse 5. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. You're going to be a fruitful Christian if he remains in you and you remain in him. But listen to this as he closes that sentence. For apart from me, you can do nothing. That's pretty strong. For apart from me, 
Christian, Christian, apart from me, you can do nothing. So we want to make sure that the genuine article, the real thing, is being produced in our lives. And it's not an imitation, it's not a counterfeit. It is truly that which is God, God is doing in us and through us. So, point number one in your sermon notes, know the real thing. You know how people are taught to recognize a counterfeit $20, $50, $100 bill? They are taught to recognize it by first and foremost knowing the real thing. Amen. That cashier is going to be told, that teller at the bank is going to be told, you take a good hard look at it. You look for those things that should be evidence of the fact that it's the genuine article. Nowadays, you can look at a dollar bill, a 20, a 50, a 100, and you can see the red and the blue threads in the paper, the material that, that, that is used to make money. You, you can look and you can see those, those watermarks on the bill itself, and often it's the image of the person. Could you believe that guy knew who was on a $20 bill? I had to look to be sure. Jackson! Oh my goodness. Wow. You might want to make sure the right picture is on the money. Make sure it's not Brother Ricky. It won't spin. They put the security tape in it. Now you can look beside the picture. And now on $100 bills, if you ever get to see one of those, they have a security ribbon, a blue ribbon on the front. All to help ensure the people who are, you know, using currency know, or receiving it especially, know that it's real. So Paul tells us, you want to know how it's really of the Spirit of God? He said, there will be fruit, there will be evidence that looks like this. There will be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. In other places, he uses righteousness. In it, you're going to see God and the nature and the character of God in it. You're going to know the real thing. You need to get to know the real thing so that when the counterfeit comes along, you that's not God. That's not God. That's not God. And even when it rises up in you, and especially when it rises up in me and you, that's not of God. That's not of God. That God would not have me do that, think that, say that. That's not God. Why? Because it doesn't pass the sniff test. That's not God. Because this is God right here. Love, joy, peace, patience, so forth and so on. We've got to know the real thing to be able to detect and identify the counterfeit. I want to know that what is kind of issuing forth out of my mouth, that is, that is beginning to bloom and blossom in my thought life and in my imagination is of God. And if I know that which is of God, I'll be able to identify that which is not. And I want you to hear this and remember this. I think it's in your notes. In the Christian life, independent human effort will produce counterfeit. Amen. If you're trying to preach out of your own knowledge and intellect, you're producing a counterfeit. If you're trying to sing out of the beautiful, natural voice that you have, you might be producing the counterfeit. We need to make sure that God is working in and through what we're presenting to the people and God Himself. That it is of God and not just of our own ability. Back in Philippians chapter 3, and our sister read it earlier, Paul made this statement, We put no confidence in human effort. Of all the people in Paul's day who could put confidence in human effort, it was Paul. Amen. And he went down the list giving you his resume of why if anybody had the qualifications to preach and to teach, he did. But he said, I counted all but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of God. None of that matters because now I know Jesus. I know the real thing. And I'm not trying to earn my righteousness anymore. God has given me God's righteousness. God has declared me righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. If anybody was in a position to trust human effort, trust their own resume, it was Paul. And Paul said, we put no confidence 
in human effort. Again, in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, he said, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what's right, but I can't. Oh, I want to tell you, your sinful nature will try to put on a very good picture. Oh, I can do that. I can do what's good. I can do what's right. I can love that person. I don't need God. I got this. Let me tell you, church, if you ever hear that come out of your mouth, you better cover your mouth, slap yourself two or three times back to your senses and say, no, Holy Spirit and I have got this. That's one of the things I love about the Emmaus Walk and the Emmaus community. When you're together planning for the Emmaus Walk and Emmaus meetings, they'll say the Holy Spirit and I, the Holy Spirit and we, which is how it should be. We've got to be able to identify the counterfeit. Let, let's look at just some examples real quick in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 6, verse number 5, we're talking about counterfeit prayer. Well, Brother Ricky, you, you're telling me we can offer up a counterfeit prayer? Absolutely. Read this one with me. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 5. You just listen as I read out loud. When you pray... Don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. Counterfeit. Why was that prayer offered up? As if that was a godly person doing a godly thing? Because they wanted to be seen and admired by the people in the community. Counterfeit. God's Spirit wasn't in that. And Jesus said they got their reward. They might have gotten the praises of people, but they did not get an audience with God. Hello. And you say, well, Brother Ricky, I don't stand on the street corner and pray out loud. I'm glad you said that. (laughs) But have you ever heard that juicy thing and got on the phone and said, Brother, Sister... We've got to be praying for John. We've got to be praying for Mary. Disaster has come. I believe she's going to leave him. You know what? If I was her, I'd leave him too. He's a sorry old scoundrel. I don't know why she married him in the first place. You know what? I've heard everything I heard obviously is true because now look what he's done. You know. It's either amen or oh me. Amen. You see how quickly our prayer request can be used by that sin nature inside of us to become a counterfeit. That's not what God is looking for. God is looking for people with broken hearts lifting up the true needs of the brothers and sisters in Christ, the true needs of this world, not using prayer or prayer request as an opportunity to God. See, that's, that's why a lot of times the community has so little faith in the church because we're acting just like the community. Oh Market got quiet. Oh, my. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Counterfeit worship. When I'm naturally talented to sing, I've got the voice. I was born with it. You ever see those little two or three-year-olds? They're, they're just singing their voices out. And you're going, man. I'm 53 and I can't sing like that. And they barely can talk and walk and they're singing like a bird. Natural ability is great. But are you singing for the glory of God or your own glory? Are you preparing? Watching every note. Watching the time. I want to be in time. I want to hit the note here. I want to hit the note there. I'm watching. I'm preparing. I want to make sure this performance is excellent. Well, I thought it was worship, not a performance. You see, we can offer God counterfeit worship when all we're doing is trying to sing a beautiful song and hit the right notes and do it in the right time. We've completely forgot about it. It's an offering to God. And I want to tell you, God knows what's real and God knows what's counterfeit. There's no life in counterfeit. There's no moving and changing and transformation of heart 
in counterfeit. I want to tell you, you can have a lesser singer who's anointed by God, who's got the courage to stand and sing and, and miss a note and get off time, and God will transform lives through that instrument, through that voice, because it's worship. And it's something He can feel and pour through. God is looking for the genuine. He's not looking for any counterfeits. There's too many of them already. Jesus said in John 4, 23 and 24, The time is come, and indeed it is here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. For God is spirit. For those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. So why don't we just get honest and ask the question, God, the things that I'm doing, are they truly of your spirit in me? Counterfeit ministry. I, 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 I laugh at this one. And I guess it's because I've never been caught doing it. <laughs> you know, it's easier to laugh at somebody else. Acts chapter 19. I don't think this one is in your notes. I call this one counterfeit ministry. Acts chapter 19, verse number 11 and following. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out from them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves. You got that church? Took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying, listen to this, this is rich, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. They just told on themselves, we don't know this guy named Jesus, but we have found out if, they will, if, if we will proclaim his name over you, that maybe the evil spirits will leave. Now, isn't that a joke? But they were, doing, they, they were serious. Also, there were seven sons of Siva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And they did. Now listen to what happened. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> Hello? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Counterfeit ministry has no power, even if you falsely try to invoke the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. That, that's, that's rich. So, we know the real thing, we identify the counterfeit, and then we destroy or render powerless the source of the counterfeit. He said in verse number 24, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to His cross and crucified them there. What do we need to remember? That you Go back and read Romans chapter 6, and that's explained in better detail. But let me say this to suffice for this moment. Just like you have new life in Christ Jesus, you also have new death. Death to the old self, the old person you were. Death, rendering powerless the sin nature inside of you. Everything you try to do outside of God and outside of God's help and God's Spirit, every bit of that needs to die. It needs to lose its power. And as a matter of fact, the terminology of the Bible and the spiritual principle is it needs to be, because it was, nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. God has provided through Christ a death to self. You might say, well, Brother Ricky, I don't know how to stop kind of putting myself out there. You can't. But you can ask Jesus to put a stop to it. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, I'm just asking you to, to apply to my life the principle of the cross. Just as Jesus died, may that old person I used to be die. The one that wanted to be in control. The one that wanted to call the shots and govern my life. May it be nailed to the cross of Calvary that the life of Christ will rise up and issue forth from within me. That I would never do anything outside of the power and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. 
I live in the Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to lead in every point and place in my life. Holy Spirit, I just offer to you that right now. I surrender all. All that I've ever been outside of you. And I embrace everything that I can be in Christ Jesus. Give me discernment to know. To know that I know that I know what is of you, Holy Spirit. And give me discernment to know that I know that I know that I know what is of the flesh and the sin nature in me. Because I'm going to tell you, just because it looks like a good idea, just because it sounds like a good idea, doesn't mean it's a God idea. And the church is doing too many good things and not enough God things. And when you look around and you don't see any fruit in what you're doing, you better stop and say, okay, was this just a good idea or a God idea? We have begun to do that in our staff meetings. We do a lot of good things. Let's make sure that they are all emerging from the Spirit of God. Anything that does not emerge from the Spirit of God needs to be destroyed, rendered powerless, set out of the way in Christ Jesus. Finally, pursue the genuine. Pursue the genuine, pursue the genuine, pursue the genuine. Put all your confidence in the Spirit's work in us. You may note that after Jesus' baptism in the Holy Spirit in Luke chapter 3, we find out, as Paul, as Luke records in Acts 10, 38, that Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with Him. Even Jesus needed the fullness of the Holy Spirit in His life. And it was because of that feeling and fullness that He was able to go out and do the ministry God had called and gifted and ordained for Him to do. I can do all things. You ever heard a Christian stop right there? I can do all things. No, you can't. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We are made more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Oh church, let us identify the genuine and pursue it. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to discern between good and God. Between flesh and spirit. Holy Spirit will not lead us to live or do anything out of self or our sin nature, but all out of the power of the Spirit. So, again, in closing, know the real thing. And in knowing the real thing, identify the counterfeit. Get rid of it and continue to pursue that which is genuine. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. We have a song. Holy Spirit's moving in this place. If you need to come, want to come pray, need to need to want to. If you need to or want to come pray, the altars are open. Oh Jesus, I have promised Hymn 396. It'll be on the screen. It's in your book, but don't let the song hinder you from following the leadership of the Holy Spirit to this altar, if He calls you this way this morning. Or maybe He's speaking to you where you sit and has not required you to come. Let's listen. Let's be obedient to whatever the Spirit would share with us today, what He would encourage us to do today. Stand with us as we sing.